now we're on activity three and activity three is my favorite section this is where we have the system design and we're going to have diagrams drawings and circuit diagrams showing how the system should look and how it should work roughly when i say how it should look that refers to how it's going to be connected not necessarily the physical look of the system because it can look any way it's just depending on how you actually connect devices and i'm going to do pseudocode i'm actually going to do flow chart as well because that's a design process that can be followed as well and the time for this should be roughly 2.5 hours i think this session here this activity three whatever session you do this in this is going to be a really good one for the logbook because it's going to have a lot of technical things again it's going to have um your parts list i'm just going to put pl for parts list that's the first thing you're going to do parts list and describing the parts and the justification of that you're going to have your flow chart fl for flow chart or you're going to have your pseudo oh, it's supposed to be ps for pseudocode and we're going to have our circuit diagram. We're going to put CD for circuit diagram. So all of these things are going to be done in this one activity. So again, your logbook should be looking really nice for this one. Okay, so activity three, prepare a user-friendly system design that can handle some unexpected events, including the selection and justification of suitable input and output devices, a description of the system design covering input and output devices and microcontroller connections, plan for the program structure, detailing key system operations so this is going to be your um your parts list with justification so say if it's input output and why you've chosen an lcd over an led that flashes a million times this is going to be your circuit diagram it could also be i would do a block diagram as well now a block diagram is not something that's actually nice it doesn't say it's something that's necessary but i would do a block diagram and a block diagram is much simpler than a circuit diagram it just simply shows in blocks the input devices the processing and the output devices so let's just say for argument's sake in my system i'm going to have a button that goes in i'm also going to have like a motion sensor that goes in that's going to go into my processing right here and on the output i'm going to have let's say the first one is an led the next one is a buzzer and the last one could be an lcd this is roughly how a sim uh, i'm going to show this as well roughly how a simple simple block diagram will look and then the last one says a plan for the program structure so this is going to be your pseudocode or your flow chart i'm going to show both methods here and you can choose whatever you think is best i prefer flow charts because they look a lot prettier they they give a lot of detail and it is just a much nicer thing to look at but it makes absolutely no sense to use a flow chart if a pseudocode can be used as well because pseudocode again gives a can give a lot more detail is much 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 quicker and much simpler to write and you can keep going back and forth really quickly whereas a flow chart you have to insert the shapes and connect them the right way and make sure you're using the right shapes and make sure that they're they're linked in the right way and make sure you can go back a flow i'm um, sorry a pseudocode you can simply just open Word or just add it to your template and simply type your pseudocode and that's it, you're done, right? So it's very, very simple to work with. For the purpose of this exam, I do recommend, if time is gonna be an issue for you, I recommend using pseudocode. However, if you know pseudocode and flowchart, then you could choose whichever one you think is best for you at the time. Next, we have design. So easily, as I said, one of my favorite sections, I like to draw diagrams and work out system logic. You can do several things for this section and I've Googled here. I might share these links with you guys. Google search of what pseudocode is and how to draw pseudocode and all of that stuff is in this Google search here. This is for my students, but I'll try and share with you guys as well. I have a Google search as well of flowcharts and I'll do the same. I'll share these links with you guys so you guys can actually go and have a look at some pseudocode, have a look at some flowcharts and there are going to be YouTube videos in the video section that show you how to do pseudocode and how to do flowcharts. System design, you need to start considering the inputs and outputs for the system, exactly what they might be, why are they important, and you must justify why that component. So this is the justification section. Why is an LCD better to display information than, L than a single LED? Next, we have system design from the examiner. So this came from um, either a, a, a template or the examiner markbook. It came from somewhere. Learners should also describe the function of the input and output devices this should also include the microcontroller connections that means the pins that the component is connected to in this section you should be as technical as possible so this is where the engineering actually really comes out whereas the other sections were just really fluffy admin stuff as i've mentioned so system design components so we're going to list all the components and give the following information the part name uh, the purpose of the part so why it's needed input or output device the quantity needed and explain why so why do you need maybe two leds versus 
one we, we need a red one and a green one red is going to be for if something goes bad green is going to be some if if everything is okay this can be a table or a paragraph for each whichever you choose is fine the information needs to be there it doesn't matter how you present the information once it's in an easily read and easily un understandable format that's completely perfectly fine a components for motion sense lights so i've given a basic example here i'm going to go into in the next section i'm going to go into my examples for the magnetic mount detection system thing right so part name is PIR, Passive Infrared Sensor. Purpose of the part, Passive Infrared Sensor detect motion by detecting radiation levels that are emitted from living creatures. This is to be the main trigger for the system. Input or output, this is an input device because again, this detects and then tells the system what to do. Quantity, only one is needed to trigger the system. So remember, this this was from my door entry thing where a teacher walks into a classroom, the lights turn on, uh, the, the door closes behind you once you get to a certain location. So this is how I would do my table. It can be like this in simple bullet pointed format, or you can have a table where you have PI, um, so yeah, so you have the part name here, you could have PIR, you could have LED, you could have button, and then you have another table where you say um, the purpose of the parts so or purpose of the PIR, Pur purpose of the button purpose of the lcd and you you could have over here input device or output device and you could say pir is input led is output you can do a table like this if you want i don't like these tables so i prefer to just do them like this so whatever works for you is perfectly fine system diagrams so i am going to do a block diagram showing only the inputs processor and the outputs that's supposed to be outputs and again, the block diagram is going to be simply something like this. So let's just say I have my PIR, so my passive inference sensor. I might have a button to stop the system or restart the system. I might have, uh, what else did I say? Uh, a light sensor. Let's just make a few things up. Here's my processor. So this is going to be the, in my case, this, this is going to be the Raspberry Pi. Yours can be the Arduino. It really doesn't matter. Just say processor here and maybe in brackets you could put Arduino, Raspberry Pi, uh, pick microcontroller, whatever you want to put. For the outputs, I'm going to have an LED. Again, I'm going to have a buzzer, I'm going to have an LCD, I'm going to have, I don't know what else, right? So this is typically how a block diagram, it's very simple to draw. It takes you, honestly, five minutes or less, and it does give some detail as to how the system should work. The overarching system should work without getting too detailed. Then I'm going to have a system diagram or a circuit diagram, um, and I'm going to be using, using the program called Fritzing, F-R-I-T-Z-I-N-G. It used to be free. I don't believe it's free anymore. I think it's like eight pounds per account. If you like this program, I really suggest speaking to your teacher or your school about trying to get it. It's it's eight euros, I think, per account, but they might be able to give a, um, a school site license where the school pays X amount per year and they can install it in as many machines as possible. That might work. The circuit diagram will show all the detail of how things should be connected. So for example, my LED is gonna come from, let's, say, let's just say for argument's sake, pin 25 is going to have a, um, a, a resistor connected to it and then it's going to have the led i'm going to, i'm just going to try and draw this quickly one sec it's going to have my led and then it's going to go to the, um the ground the ground um the ground rail right so this is how my circuit diagram is going to look it's going to be much more detailed compared to my block diagram so this is an example here of a block diagram simple input processing and output so this is my input here i've got my mouse keyboard etc this is my processing now this is not a microcontroller block diagram but it really doesn't matter a block diagram is a block diagram it shows more or less the same kind of information or, or the same levels of detail for the information trying to be shown and here is my output and the next one i have my circuit diagram so this is what fritzing looks like um, a fritzing diagram is fine if you use another program that is also fine be sure to save not only the image of that but save the program as well reason being you can go back and make changes and make copies of everything every time you create a program and make a change have a folder where you copy stuff into copy stuff into so just in case something goes bad you can always go back and change it if you can do it from scratch in a computer design program like photoshop that is fine that's only i would only say do this if you're like super 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 quick honestly i think powerpoint is probably going to be the best thing for most people because what you can do in powerpoint is simply in insert a rectangle right so this is essentially a rectangle insert a rectangle and does have the pins coming off that easy nice and easy i highly recommend fritzing because it's really cheap it's really good it's really detailed it, it has raspberry pi raspberry pi pico it has R I think it has all the arduinos i think it has um, the pic microcontrollers as well so you can actually go in and tailor it to your specific project but you can also do that if you draw the thing manually so again you could use um what, what did i say before powerpoint and you, you can have the pins coming off like that and you can simply 
say this is obviously pin one that's let's say for argument's sake pin 10 and you you can connect things the way you want pseudocode and or flowchart you need to produce pseudocode or a flowchart the choice is yours make the design as detailed as possible don't miss anything make it perfect spend time on it and make sure you go through every single thing flowcharts take more time to create keep that in mind i personally in this exam because it's 12 hours it sounds like a lot of time but I wouldn't waste time on a flowchart. But as much as I think flowcharts are much better and they're pretty and they're nicer to work with, I wouldn't waste time on a flowchart. But that's just me. Pseudocode, open word, and you have your, I think I have it on the next slide anyway. Here we go. So this is the pseudocode stuff I got from the BBC Bite Size website. This is for GCSE computer science or IT, but it really doesn't matter. You, you can use most of this as your pseudocode keywords or key phrases. So input, obviously, output, obviously, while for repeat until here, eh, if then else, definitely. Uh, but these one, two, three, four, five, you can skip this if you don't need it. If you need it, perfectly fine. And these could be your main keywords. So when you go in the exam, just remember these keywords, right? Quickly jot them down on a piece of paper or quickly type them into a document when you get in the exams or so you don't lose them. And as soon as you get to the pseudocode section, these are your, these are your keywords. So I'm going to show how I would do a pseudocode for my system as well and hopefully it makes sense to you guys so here's an example of a pseudocode again from the bbc bite size website so you guys can pause it and have a look at it it's just sentences this is why i prefer pseudocode for this section because it's just a sentence so it says repeat right we just keep doing that that's very self-explanatory it says output what is the best subject uh, you take output simply meaning it's going to be put on a display it's going to be put to an led so you could say for example output then turn red led on since the system has detected a bad mount body thing right and then you could say or if mount body is good output turn on green led because system mount body has detected a magnet whatever you think is best right pause the video have a look at this or go to the bbc bite size pseudocode website again you could just google these terms but i give these powerpoints to my students so that they can simply click on the link and go straight to that location and see what's there uh here we have the flowchart symbols these are the main ones I, I would focus on there are a few more like the arrow and the dot but i don't really think those are super necessary so we have the start or stop they do exactly the same thing so that one shape would be for start and it would be for stop obviously if you're starting your program you don't put the stop part in you just put start a process an instruction or a command that's not seen is done in the background so for example i don't know work out two plus five in the background and then give me my answer that's going to be output we have a decision so that's if else else if elif however you say whichever language you're deciding to use and we have input or output again this is on the bbc bite size website i believe so click on that link in the description or simply google bbc bite size pseudocode and this one would be bbc bite size flowchart i think it comes up on two separate pages but they're in the same location on the website here's another flowchart example so it says start here this this is how you would actually do a flowchart start here declare variables a b c again these are processes this is slightly different from let's say input or output because these are processes that we actually don't see on screen when the program is running what actually happens this is done in the background right the declare variable so you create a variable in python it would just simply be a equals let's say 25 uh, what's next b equals uh, 100 c equals uh, i don't know 200 right that's not something that's shown on screen when the program is running this is something created in the background when the programmer does it and then here we have a decision so we can say is a greater than b this is exactly how a flowchart should look and the reason i said to you guys i wouldn't do flowchart for this you're going to have to do all of this in the exam and your flowchart is going to be much 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 longer than this and doing this in powerpoint as easy as it should be you're going to have a few issues in terms of connecting the dots and make sure they stay connected make sure they stay neat having the text at the side inserting text boxes it is 100 possible so don't let me put you off doing it if if you know how to do it quickly if you don't know how to do it quickly please find an alternative and the best alternative is going to be um the not flowchart the pseudocode here next we're going to have a circuit diagram as i said before i'll be using fritzin i think it is overall the best one to use you can use any program you want i've added a link here again it's going to be in the description google search best free circuit drawing software ask your school or college or sorry your teacher to look into these but i do think fritzing is by far the best one free fritzing alternatives so things similar to fritzing for example the best free alternatives i've found it's a website below this one is called wow key arduino simulator and even though it says arduino simulator it does have the raspberry pi pico on there as being a microcontroller as well so if i click on this quickly let me just click on this 
how do i click on this let's see if i click on it it takes me there and i scroll all the way down to the bottom and it has raspberry pi pico now the downside of this is in the exam won't have access to the internet so as good as this is it's, it might be nice and easy to practice with just to get a feel of how you would actually do your circuit diagram but in the exam you won't have access to the internet so unless this company has a program i'm not aware of this is how it's going to be done and just like the arduino ide people are using the arduino ide you can program in there and you can also connect other devices and and things in here i haven't tried it out properly let's see add a new part oh yeah you can add many things in here i've never used this one i just googled it and found this website really really good that's another one there for you and what was the last thing uh, activity three recap so again we're, we're going to be doing a parts list with justification first so we're going to justify why we've chosen each individual component then from there i'm, I'm going to do a block diagram it is not recommended it's not even told that you need to do it i'm just going to do one because it's easy to do and it still gives an overarching view of the system as well then before circuit diagram and system diagram i'm actually going to do pseudocode and flowchart for you guys showing you how i would start mine how i would do mine and then my last thing is actually going to be my system or circuit diagram so mine is going to be part List with justification, block diagram, pseudocode and flowchart, and then system or circuit diagram, very, very last. This whole section should take roughly 2.5 hours. So I think I'm going to go back and update the activity one log. And I think activity three might take an entire session depending on the time given. If your school is going to do three hours a day or four hours a day, this whole thing might be one whole activity log, which is perfectly fine. Just be careful that you're keeping in time. And as I said here, you need to go back to your activity one log and update all that was done in this session. What you intend to do next session and the issues you came up against this session an issue could genuinely be the fact that there is no circuit diagram program on the pc so you had to improvise on going to microsoft what's it called powerpoint or microsoft paint even and you had to insert shapes there and draw the circuit diagram manually that's perfectly fine as well that's an issue that came up ensure that the tasks done in the logbook all tie in so they must tie in together so every single thing that you've done needs to be tied in into the logbook i don't have my logbook open now but remember go back to activity one you've already done log one i've, I've already shown how to do log one this is going to be log two well for session two it's still going to be activity one but it's going to be a separate log hopefully that was useful and the next section i'm going to work on is the parts list and maybe the block diagram at once